Welcome to the Digital Nomad Cafe podcast, the show where we discuss what it takes to create a sustainable long-term online business in today's fast-moving environment. We talk with industry experts and freelancers alike to find out what it takes to build and manage a location-independent business. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Digital Nomad Cafe podcast. If this is your first time listening, this is a show where we have honest and transparent conversations around building and managing an online business, freelancing and remote work. New episodes are available in your favorite podcast player through iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or you can head over to digitalnomadcafe.com to be notified when a new show is released. In today's episode, I'm talking with Mike Lewandowski. And Mike runs a website called leadsforsales.co.uk, who specialize in Facebook ads. Mike, welcome to the show. Hi, glad to having me. Thanks for coming on, man. So we came across each other, um, you know, on Facebook, as you do. We're in a lot of this, the same groups. And I started reading your content and I thought, you know, you'd be an awesome guest for for the podcast, man. You, you put out really good, you know, value first content. So, um, yeah, <laughs> thanks for coming on. Yeah, glad you like it. So I guess, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, how you came to start in your business? Right. That, that That's a good question. So um, it all happened about about six years ago. Like, you know, back then I was like 18 or 19 years old. I, I don't remember exactly. But, you know, I always knew that I want to do something, something interesting with my life, that I don't want to have just like a nine to five job. And I, I, you know, like want to build something, create something, like do something that, you know, I'll be proud of, proud of when I will be 90 years old. Right. So, but I wasn't really sure, like, what is, what is that what, my thing? Like, what is the thing I'm supposed to be doing? And back then everyone around me, like my friends were just, you know, going to some two universities and try, trying to, to pick some studies because, because you're supposed to, right? Because there was a social pressure for you, for you to do so. So I was like, hmm, actually not sure if this is what I want to be doing. So I did a gap year. And for about a year, I was, you know, like having various different jobs in different countries, like cool random jobs, right? For example, so one of the things I was doing, I, I was... I went to Norway backpacking and I just painted houses there, right? <laughs> and, I, and I made a whole bunch of money because the, the salaries are good there. Uh, th- then I traveled traveled in Asia. I traveled Arab, Arab countries and Balkans. Uh, and then I decided that, that yes, I will go to the university. But what I'm going to be doing is I will, I will go study philosophy. Uh, and why this choice was because... Um, I knew that you know I want to to find out what life is about. It was this kind of approach, right? I didn't care about about the money part, about you know like getting education to find a job because I was like, okay, I will figure out something on my own anyways. Uh, but then I knew that if you want to study philosophy, you know, for you to to have a backup uh, plan, you need to pick a good university. So so I decided to study in London. I really liked London before. I, I used to be there many times uh, prior to studying there. Um, and just when I started studying, I realized how crazy expensive the city is. Um, so, you know, even though my parents were sending me some money, uh, because of the difference in the purchasing power parity, like those money were not that much in London. Um, so I had to find a job. Um, and I thought I have like a quite a strong resume, uh, because, you know, I like throughout high school, I was doing a really a lot of NGOs, you know, some different kinds of work. I was even working as an event manager in a club back in back in Warsaw um, because I came from Warsaw to London. Uh, but you know, so it happens after sending about fifty resumes to, to like even the most basic office jobs, the competition is just so high in London that you know like no one took me in. So uh, I had to find different kind of job, like a very basic one. So I eventually ended up as a bar support uh, in a club in London. Um, which was, you know, to the extent a fun job, but but very tiresome, like very f- physical uh, and 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 super basic, right? So so for the first year of my studies, I was just, you know, like <laughs> hustling my bum of uh, studying during the days and and working full time during the evenings, you know, not really having any social life, like not not the best time in my life. And back then, my quick cousin of mine, he used to, to study in Maastricht in the Netherlands. And he told me like, Mike, you know, you, you've done this marketing stuff before. Like, why not just, just see if you can, if you can help as a freelancer. Uh, and he told me about, about Upwork and, and this is how I started, right? So, so I started like, you know, I did my research and I was like, okay, maybe, maybe Facebook ads is, is something I want to offer, right? Because then I will be able to, to combine my studies with, with this work in in, in, a, in an easier way and, and more and more sustainable way, 
Um, and so I did. I, I find also found some mentors, some communities to help me out with that. And and that's how it slowly started, right? I, I was doing the simple gigs at the beginning. Then I, I was doing the more, more difficult gigs. And and eventually I, I came, came to the real, realization that, um, first of all, you know, I can increase the quality of what we deliver if I if I build a team around this. And second of all, it is good to have an asset on your own. Um, and this is why I registered my business and, and I'm building the agency uh, since then. Awesome. So it came out of necessity in terms of living in an expensive city like London, but also not wanting to do... You know, like like the late nights. I've done bar work myself. Like you yeah. know, late nights, finishing at four in the morning, trying to get into college the next day. That's literally. I worked in a nightclub for three years while yeah, going so to college. So you know, I, I was literally, like... <laughs> I know the exact what it's like. And I mean, ironically, most of our uh, the 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 staff as well were you know Polish and Lithuanian. So it was like Galway, a very popular spot in Ireland. There's lots of yeah, <laughs> lots of the community there as yeah. well. But yeah, but it's not ideal for te- for what you're studying. But this is awesome. So you know, so then you started looking into the freelance and started looking on Upwork. So can we talk to that a little bit about you know when you got started with it and you know if you still use it uh, to this day or if you've kind of migrated off? Yeah. So so I, I'm still using it, but it becomes less and less important of a funnel for me. Uh, you know, you, you, the the problem with 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 Upwork is that. You know, you you do not own own the asset, as I said, right? So you cannot really scale this up. For example, sometimes we get some clients from there, but you know, it's just a minor part of the business right now. Okay, so and would you proactively, like, you know, the way people are posting jobs? You know, would you have somebody who proactively reaches out to these jobs, or is it people find you through, you know, like if I go in and put in an ad today for Facebook ads, it'll recommend me some people, and you just pop up because you've aged your profile and delivered results? It's mostly invitations right now. Yeah, so we don't we don't we don't do much with it. Awesome. So that's uh, yeah. I guess after you do the, you know, after you put in your time, isn't it? Like you have to put in your time first with Upwork and and get those reviews and build a profile. And yeah, then... yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 you need you need you need to see it as a funnel, right? Like you need to um, optimize your description, make sure that you you have a good contact with the clients, high high success score rate, and all, and all of those things combined, of course. You sound like a man who must be interested in click funnels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would I be correct? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we we use a bit of click funnels as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, cool. Just when you start talking about funnels, I'm reading uh, dot com secrets. At the mm, end, uh, yeah, great uh, book. Know, and, and I've been aware of uh, you know click funnels for many years. I've used it on and off for myself and for different clients. But I guess when you start talking about sales funnels, often um, you know <laughs> just with the internet marketing world, a lot of people seem to use that as as a solution. So um, yeah, yeah, that, that's true. I mean, it's it's a good, so click funnels is a good simple solution. Like what, what my friends used to say is that you know eventually that just isn't enough if you want to build something more complex but but it's a good if you want to, to, to put a simple funnel and make it work quickly of course so i guess you know talking about you know starting to get work outside of upwork you know how did that look when you started doing that was it was it true referrals and word of mouth were you doing local networking events like what did you do to start growing your business and you know and your client base outside of um, using the likes of upwork so 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 some of it was was physical meetings so you know like once once you start working in some niche you you get to know people from the same city in that niche and just by socializing like you can get some people to work with you right so so for example you know there was a friend of my friend who had a company that helps um helps um, people from poland apply for the uk universities uh and this is their business model uh and they need you know help with their website so so I just met them at one of the parties we organized uh, at my flat and then we started working together, right? That's that's just one of the examples. Uh, another one is referrals, right? So so whenever we, we got a client, uh, you know, we obviously try to retain clients for as long as possible, but um, you would be surprised how much business you can you can take out of uh, the good uh, referral strategy. And that's that's a big one, actually. Yeah, you know, I, I spoke with... Um, John, who runs an agency, I think he was in Budapest or something. But what he does is when he's in London or you know in a city like that, he really gets on the ground, like networking, BNI invites, mm-hmm. chamber of commerce. Mm-hmm. Do what you can to get in front of the sort of people who might hire you, and then yeah, skedaddle back to you know uh, Budapest and you know work from there. <laughs> and it was, <laughs> I thought it was a really good strategy that whenever he's in these cities, because you know I've done my time with that sort of stuff as well. Like when you run an agency. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and I know we advocate for online, but you know, you can meet these people in real life and then take the work and do it online, you know, but you have, that's true. A, that's true. When you have that rapport and that trust and you, you've actually met the people in person, you know, it, there's a lot more trust, I feel, you know, in, in the people. Yeah. That, 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 that makes sense. Like what you need to make sure only is that, is that it's worth your time, right? Because, because like, because personally, I prefer to, to build solutions that are um, easy to automate and scalable and don't involve your time personally. So if they do, you need to make sure that it's worth your time. Of course. So let's talk to that a little bit. So I guess when you started getting, I mean, we started, uh, you know, f- from the beginning, you were, you were working nights, you know, doing uh, in nightclubs in London, and then you started freelancing. It, you know, at what point did you decide, I need help or I need to start building automation into this. Um, you know, what did that look like? What tools did you use? Um, so, so up until now, like first thing that was, that was a, a huge uh, upgrade for me was not any specific tool, but getting the virtual assistant. That was a major one because, because if you have a virtual assistant, you can, you can automate whatever you want, even things where you, you know, you don't you don't have software for right. So, so for example, what you can do is you can you can ask your VA to you know you you write a piece of content and you ask your VA to post it on all your social media channels. Or uh, you have people contacting you and you can you can let the VA know how to respond to them. Or or you can get them track your your you know your your lead generation stats in in Google Sheets folder, right? Or the follow ups for you. So so that was the the biggest biggest you know difference for me was that you know like you can free up so much of your time by by delegating the tasks which are um you know easy to understand repeatable and maybe and maybe you know like of a lower value and so you can instead focus on something that brings brings more value of course um, so where did you was it where did you find your um virtual assistant um so what i've done is i i posted on on different groups on facebook because my idea was that um, when you hire off Upwork, um, you get rates which are, um, you know, kind of like international standardized rates, right? So you you can get someone for you know like I don't know like five dollars an hour, six dollars an hour, or even lower, but you will not get the best quality for it, right? Because people know you know that let's say people from the USA can pay more for that, right? So so what I'm doing is that is I'm looking for uh for places like for example, Facebook groups where, where you can find people who are not used to work as freelancers, but who, who are used to work regular jobs, but they would like to, to have some side thing going on, right? So um, so just to give you an, an idea, I found a, a, a Polish uh, Polish girl, really, really smart, uh, and she has a double major in uh, administration and accounting, right? And she used she got brains to burn, <laughs> right? And she used to and she used and she used to work as an as an like administrative manager um, in company in Cyprus for like for the last for the last five years. And the reason she she wanted to to have a head gig was because she she just got a baby and she was looking for a way to work from home, which is like the ideal setup. Because I guess when you when you work with like when you hire freelancers online, you know, on places like Upwork. I mean, they're always looking for, you know, they have to fill their client base, which is to be, you know, I understand that like they have so many hours in the week they're trying to fill. They're always pitching for new jobs, you know, and, and uh, yeah, it, it can be varied. If it's their full time income, then if you're not giving them the hours, then you know what I mean? They can drop you at any moment for somebody who will. Whereas if you're hiring people, I spoke with this and with Carlo on episode one and a lot of his writers, it's not their full time gig. It's their part time gig. It's what they do after their work to make a few extra quid. And, and that's why they're so reliable, I guess, you know, yeah, and, uh, yeah. for, for, for him. So it sounds like you're speaking a lot to, to a similar strategy. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So, and, you know, she works remote and, you know, how have you found, um, you know, managing a virtual staff? Do you have, you know, weekly meetings daily? Like, how do you do it? Yeah, just, there's like a once, once a week meeting, essentially, every Monday where we discuss, you know, all the, all the strategies, the updates and what has been happening and, and the statistics. Uh, and besides that, we just maintain the communication over Slack channels, which Perfect. is which is enough for the VA part for sure. 
Absolutely. I, I live in it every day. <laughs> I spend more time in Slack than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, that's cool. So so then that frees up your time, I guess, you know, that can automate parts in the back end. Um, you know, you have you have to help somebody you rely on and you can trust. So when it comes to the actual delivering of the work, you know, like in terms of setting up ads, testing, scaling, did you, you know, how did you go about hiring help for that? Or do you, did you maintain, you know, keeping that, those cars close to your chest? Right. So, so um, obviously you need to automate in order to, to scale the business, right? Like there is, there is no way around this. And one thing that is the, the biggest challenge in my opinion is to, is to find people and build a team that actually cares about, about what was happening, right? Like, the huge problem with hiring online is like most people just don't care and they and they you know they see only their own interests in a very narrow way right which which hurts you know like the, the clients the company and themselves right so so the biggest challenge is to is to actually build a reliable team of people who trust each other and who deliver great service um, and you know it's it's always a trial and error i went through maybe i don't know 12 different people until I found the two that I want to be working with, or, or three that I want to be working with, and and this was a combination of dif- of different recruitment funnels. Part of this was Upwork, part of this was Facebook. Uh, I also used Indeed, uh, which which worked uh, well for me as well. Um, and so and so 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 currently the way the way we have the team set up is that for the deliver itself is that there is three people working with me, uh, and there is one person that is. Uh, from Poland, and that is the expert when it comes to the um, SEO tracking, Google Tag Manager, and, and Google Analytics. Uh, and what they can do is, you know, whenever we advertisers, we don't know these technical tracking things, how to make it work. They always know what to do, and they always can step in and fix fix those things for us, right? Which is which is great. <laughs> uh, then uh, there is the assistant media buyer that is executing the the strategies I outlined day to day. And then there is uh, a person that is doing copywriting, uh, but also they used to work as the CRO expert for the last 10 years. So they help us optimize the funnels to make sure that we squeeze as, you know, as much as possible from every, uh, every visitor that comes from, from the Facebook ads. Awesome. That sounds like a, a dream team. <laughs> and then, of course, yourself and your and your virtual assistant to, um, you know, on, on top of all that. So, I mean, it's it's essentially, yeah. you know, there's, yeah, yeah. there's five, but you're at the. Yeah, that's awesome. And and you would do the most high level tasks, I imagine, at this point, such as having the sales calls with the potential clients and things like that. Is it? Yeah. So it's so it's sales and lead generation. But, you know, I what I really believe is like until like as long as your company is not making, I don't know, at least $1 million in revenue per year, you will always have to wear many hats, right? <laughs> and, and it's just something, something you, get, you have to be, to be used to, right? So, so obviously, like, I'm doing it all and, you know, I'm still, you know, optimizing the ads daily. I'm still, you know, building some funnels for the clients, like whatever is necessary, right? Because, because also what is important for me in, in, in my team for the good company culture is that, you know, like there is no strict roles as like you're the manager and you're the, you know like the guy doing the legwork right like i want everyone to feel like you know they can always get help from someone else and that we are doing this thing together right which which is which is which is very good and also you know it gives me the opportunity to um to be in the trenches all the time and really you know not 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 lose the the connection with with the rest uh, of the business and what the clients actually need of course, and that's I guess that also then contributes to you know, like I'm saying, the really good content that you put out on on your Facebook and your social media with regards to you know what's actually happening with ad sets and what your thoughts are on it and and things like that, you know, because Facebook, as we all know, often changes their algorithm. Um, you know, th- things can go up and down. Yeah, like how how ads perform. You know, some people panic. You know, ads that were going well all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. drop. Yeah. Like, there's so many variables, and at the end of the day. No more than your SEO and Google, like it, you know, the algorithm is owned by somebody else, and you're in there and you're paying for ads, and but they can adjust and pivot, and they don't need to make excuses for it. Like they, yeah, they they do what they do. It's their platform, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. That's you true. just ha- you just have to adapt and 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 learn, and and you know, if you're not, if you're multiple steps removed from the front lines, it can be difficult to see, and you know, you could be just going, you know, maybe giving out to your staff or something, like, why aren't these ads performing? But when you're down there and you see what's happening, you're like, ah, I, I get what's happening here. You know, you're, you're close. Yeah, 
Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So and then in terms of you know, so which which sort of businesses do you work with now? And you know, do you, would you say are like your your ideal clients? And you know, did you have to go through a bit of a trial and error phase to get to your ideal client realization? Yes. Yes. We. We worked with fitness coaches. We worked with coaches of different kinds. We worked with Amazon sellers. Um, we worked with local service providers. Um, and we eventually ended up in e-commerce. <laughs> and, and, and the reason we like e-commerce is, you know, like many people say it, it is the most difficult uh, niche in Facebook advertising, but why, and then the most labor intense. But what I like it for is that in, you, you know, the, the budgets in the e-commerce are, are the biggest, I think, generally speaking. And I also think that um, the, you have a lot of conversion events happening within the budget, right? So what I'm saying is when you when you sell, let's say, you know, like an online course and the, and the, the, the sale is worth like a few thousand dollars for you, then you will not get as many conversions as when you're selling, you know, like a $50 product for the same, um, for the same uh, budget, right? And... Because because of that, like you know, we have more data to work with, and the more data to, we, we we can work with, the more the better informed we are, and the better results we can bring to our clients. That's the, that's the first thing uh, why we like it as as media buyers. And then the second reason we like it is because um, okay, let me just get my thoughts together, right? So so we have more variables in control, right? So so usually in the local services and so on, like much depends on on your clients' uh, sales skills, uh, right? And and then you know like you can send them leads and they may work or may not work depending on the variable that is independent from your uh, from yourself right versus in e-commerce this, this is not the case I mean you know as long as you know that the product product of the client is working then you you have everything in control and you know I apply the same principle to um, to the way I build my team this is why we offer the CRO as well right because then we know that if something is not not working at any stage of the funnel not just Facebook ads but maybe the website we are able to fix it. Um, and that's how we get in control of as many variables as, as we can. That's awesome. So that, that is the difference. So you're not, oh, believe me, I know what you're talking about, especially with regards to the local, um, you know, even episode one, Carlo, that's a big part of what he, he does. And similar scenario, sending all these leads to, to this dentist and the dentist's assistant wasn't actually following up on any of the messages. And it was like, is it any wonder you're not, you don't think this is working? Um, yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. Like when you, the variable is out of your hands, it becomes about that person's sales skill. If yeah. they're not actually any good at closing the sale or they don't have an automated follow-up sequence in place um, with regards to following up on these clients, curing bookings, doing their upsells, yeah, it's not going to work, you know? So with e-commerce and what you're talking about here is like, let's say you're sending traffic to that webpage and maybe... Maybe the product description isn't just very isn't very good, yeah. or the imagery is poor. You'll actually go that step further, and your team will go in and you know do what they can to optimize that page. Exactly. So you're not you're not just driving traffic to yeah, like you're not just taking somebody's money and going yeah, we'll run the ads, and you run the ads, and you're like oh, it doesn't work. Oh well, your product must be shit. Exactly, you know? exactly. <laughs> you're not doing that. It's like taking it all the way through the journey, and that's awesome. So it, it sounds like and and is that. With regards to building that out and getting in front of these type of clients, ironically, do you take your own medicine? Do you use Facebook ads to get yourself these leads and clients or um, Facebook groups? You know, what's worked for you to get in front of e-commerce store owners with budgets? Right. G- good question, right? So so as I said, like a, a big part of, of our acquisition strategy currently is is the referrals, right? So if you, if you want an, the actual actionable tip, right, the way we do it, which which works very well, uh, and I think, frankly, I learned. I think I learned part of this from like Grant Cardone, and part of it, part of it is like like my own process, but it works very well. Uh, which is uh, once you close the sale, um, there is the first opportunity to ask for the referral, right? Because people are hyped; they just started working with you, and they're super excited. And then the second best opportunity is after three months, where you already proved your value and, and you are getting great results with them, right? So, so the way the way you want to do it is that on the first call, once everything is set up, you're saying something like, by the way, do you want to help me? And, you know, like, of course, they will say yes, because who wouldn't want to help you, right? Um, you ask them, uh, do you know any people that could benefit from the services we provide as much as you do? Uh, what we can offer them with is the free audit uh, so that they can learn if they can improve their Facebook ads, right? And then they will, there is a high chance they will tell you, yes, yes, I, I do know someone. Right, 
maybe they don't, then, then it's fine. But if they do, then you can you just follow up with a question saying, uh, okay, who did you think of, right? Um, what this makes, what this does is it's, you know, <clears throat> they, they will give you names, right? So, you know, from the abstract, abstract, it will become real people. And you can ask them if they can connect you. Um, and what will happen is they will either connect you on the immediately, or they will tell you something like, um, you know, uh, let's, let's get the results first, and then I will be happy to connect you. So then you just make a note on those names, and then in three months' time, you follow up on this and ask them if this is the right time to connect you. And that's a really good way to, to get a lot of business going. Um, so that's, that's something that we use very heavily and something that works well for us. Um, other than so it kind of has a two a two sided approach. So that you essentially you're either going to get that warm referral from that person, but if not, you still know you still have the name of the person in the business probably. So you can just go and you know try and get in front of them through your normal sales process, be it outreach, be it, be it a, an advert or something like that. Yeah, you could do. Like we're not doing this because you know I'm I'm not sure how this would affect the relationship with the client, but but that's possible. That's possible as well. But but overall, yeah, I mean this is you know like you you get people to commit and and then you know as long as you deliver great work, it's, it's a win win for everyone. So so that's the main that's the main method. Um, then we we are actually in the process of of building a, a funnel which is like a mix of content marketing and email marketing and Instagram reach out. So that's something we are working on, but we are still polishing the the market message we want to build, right? Um, once once we hit 100 posts, uh, we'll do the summary and we'll see what people are reacting best to. And this is when we want to, to launch our Facebook ads funnel. Um, we don't have this yet just because the, the competition for, for that is very high because it's just so obvious that the Facebook ads agency would run Facebook ads, right? <laughs> so, so, we just, so we just don't want to do, be doing the same stuff everyone else is doing. So we want to be very unique with our message, right? So, so first we want to polish this message and only after uh, build the funnel around that message. Fair enough. And, and with regards to, you know, using Facebook itself, not just on the ad side of thing, but Facebook groups to interact and, and show value, is that something that you would do yourself? Um, yes, I would do it, but in a soft way, right? Like we don't... We don't like you, you never want to come out as, as as spamming like you want to come out as, as value giving right so for example i never ever message people asking them if they have any work to do right uh just because you know like people people come to facebook to to you know to essentially relax and then not think of the work right and maybe if someone messages them like hey do you have any work for me it will be it will be annoying right so what we do instead is we uh we reach out to people by just adding them, and if they if they feel like you know it's like a, a little poke, and if they feel like you know there is some connection, they can they can reach back to us and and connect with us, and maybe there will be some um, some potential for for working together. Um, and you know, on top of that, we obviously post content that is going to be of value so that they can see uh, themselves, you know, what we are coming with. Um. Yeah, no, that, that's definitely interesting because it's just the content that I see on your your profile is is very good. You know, I'll make sure to link to it in the show notes. Thank you. Um, so Thank I was you. just curious, like, do you cross promote that in groups? Do you go into groups answering questions? But I mean, it's, it, it kind of sounds like, like, really, it sounds to me like your referral strategy is very powerful for you already. So it's not, like you're not necessarily out. Like, while it's important to always have people coming through the funnel, you're not like aggressively in e-commerce groups, like posting every other day, trying to let people know what you do you know like it's um it's right. it very yeah, natural yeah. what you have going on and quite quite efficient as it is so uh. yeah yeah so 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 as, as, as i told you at the beginning like what what we are trying to achieve is is um you know we keep in mind that whatever we are building we want we want it to be um process oriented not the person oriented right so that you know in 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 three years from now i don't have to be doing the same stuff all over again I love your thought process. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm on board. I'm on board with what you're saying, you know, I, I, like, absolutely. I like, yep. I've been drinking that Kool-Aid for a long time, but so, so just to, I guess, so how do you manage that? Like what tools would you use yourself on a daily basis to try and, you know, avoid, you know, those sort of situations where things that are repeatable, you end up doing it over and over again. Like, do you have like, what, what does your kind of tool suite look like from a day to day basis? Right. So when it comes to the team management, we are using three, a setup of three things, really, which is um, um, Asana for project management, um, Google Docs for, for managing the, the assets and, and workloads and this kind of things, and, and Slack for communication. Um, 
when it comes to tracking results, uh, we we actually use um, Google Docs, like Google Excel sheets, just because uh, that we haven't found a CRM, CRM that would like help us automate the funnels we are building, uh, which is like a, a mix of you know like LinkedIn, Facebook, like different different platforms, like just you know like a no tool that, that could help us with this. Uh, for for the scheduling end, like we use a combination of click panels and schedule ones. Um, great tool for making sure that people you know book a time uh, in your calendar and keep it organized. And then all this is connected to the um, to the Google Calendar, which in turn is connected to my to do list. So to do list is the tool that I'm using day to day to organize my own tasks, right? Uh, so whenever someone books a call, whenever I have something to do, it's always in to do list, and it's it's both my personal things and and, and work things. Um, so that's what I got sent. <laughs> I got when when we were booking this podcast, I got a, like a little to do list. It was like find a time. <laughs> so that, that's what I must have got. I must have got the yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you got you got you got the screenshot from this. I I totally love this software. Like it it just makes your life so much easier because once you get into the habit, like it keeps your life organized. Like you wake up, you you do, you do your morning routine, maybe you meditate, and then you just you know open it up and you know exactly what you need to do for a day. It's awesome. I love it, and uh, you know. I, even what you're talking about there, you know, keeping keeping it simple, but it's complex in terms of like you're using Google Sheets and Excel, you know, to pull in the leads from from different sources. I mean, and you can use things like uh, scripts, Google Sheets, you can build scripts into them so you can pull all your call track and everything like, you know, I, I've seen, um, I can't think of the guy's name now, he's on YouTube, um, but he builds Ryan something, but like he, yeah, he's got, he's got some real good content on, yeah, like using Zapier and Google Scripts, and I mean running yeah. the whole thing yeah. from, from everything, and it just runs in Google Sheets and Trello and updates and changes colors and moves things. It's just fascinating to watch, you know. Um, this this is this is fun, but like one downside of it is that like those neither of those tools is is an ideal uh, when it comes to integration. So there's always a high chance you know you will lose some data, uh, and there's you know you always need to assume some some accuracy. Um, margin, right? So, so for example, you know, like when you transfer leads from A to B, you will get ninety-five percent of those leads, and so on, right? So, so this is why we keep part of the process manual as well. Cool. No, look, that's man. Sounds like you're efficient, and there's no room, for, there's no margin for error there. You're like, nope, that's not good enough. <laughs> Let's do it this way, and that's a man who's about his numbers, you know. And you're, you're just, um, yeah, that sounds awesome. Like really efficient, um, and and simple at the same time in terms of, you know, um, like the tool suite is fairly light, but it, it it's powerful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It doesn't mm -hmm. need to be, yeah. any more complex. And you know, as you're saying, you can build things into Asana, you copy out projects when you get new clients on board your team runs through the systems like you know what i mean so that's building build once use uh use over and over again but also refine as as you as you learn more and, and new tools exactly info exactly exactly but that, that's the, that's the key you summed it up pretty well deadly so look let's say you were listening to this podcast now um a couple of years ago while you were uh, on the way home on on the train um from your nightclub job you know and you were wondering about <laughs> no but seriously like like i mean i have people who listen who are just wanting to get into this people who are only beginners but also people who are, who are advanced so it's like if you were in the years of that person and you know they were wondering like oh, i'd love to you know get into building an online business or running an agency or a service um and you were back at square one and you didn't have any any sales or any clients but you were super interested like what would you know what would you say to that person or what would be your advice great great question and i think there's there's one thing which which beats another advice which is get a mentor right you can try figuring things on your own but why do so if you can if you can get someone that has done what you want to be doing, right? Um, and sometimes you need to pay for a mentor. Sometimes you will find someone that will be happy to coach you for free. But that's the best way to cut your learning curve, right? It's just you know like it like you, you can try learn learning reading without you know like without a teacher. But like how how much time it will take you instead of just getting someone to tell you how it works, right? Of course. Oh, I'm totally on board with what you're saying. Um, so who, I mean, do you mind me asking, did you do a course? Do you have a mentor that you you actively use or you used at the beginning to help? So I, I use multiple mentors um, currently, right? Like it sounds like usually the process is that like you start with one thing and then and then you progress toward towards the other things uh, and, and you get more and more advanced mentors and eventually you are in a situation where you just need to take bits 
uh, of information from different people and, and you know like combine this into your own solution, right? This, this is where I am. But but to start with, you want to you want to learn the basics, right? Uh, and there is there is few few groups that I can recommend. You know, like depending on <clears throat> some, some things that just 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 teach you how to deliver, right? So when it comes to the delivery, I can I can highly recommend guys like like Depesh Mandala or or uh, Ezra Firestone. And when it comes to that, to the actual agency agency building, uh, one of, of of a better masterminds is a business business mentor, and then another one I think is called Tribal Bootcamp. So so those are the ones I know, and those ones the ones I I can recommend for sure. I'll I'll try and find them and add them to the show notes over at digitalnomadcafe.com. I'm big big sure. fan of Ezra. I'm heading to Affiliate World Conference in June. I am looking forward to seeing him there in Barcelona. Um, I'm it's he's like one of those people that I want to get on this podcast once upon a time. And I will get him. Don't you worry. <laughs> you oh, do. I will. A hundred percent. He doesn't know it yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get him here. I'm a big fan of James Shramko as well. So James, um, superfastbusiness.com. He's the guy who taught Ezra, you know what I mean? To scale his business from like 3 million to 25 million. So like two of those guys are, are um, yeah, I've been listening to them for years. Like almost like that's the strange thing about podcasts. Like I literally have been listening to those guys for four or five years. And I feel <laughs> like I know so much about them. And, and that's why I like podcasts. And, you know, it's why I wanted to start one, because I feel like you can really resonate with people and also share like, you know, we got so much more out of this than a like a guest blog post or something like that. And, yeah. And there's so many yeah. like I have so many timestamps here. I've scribbled down on a sheet of paper that like you know, you're just offering so much value to um, to the audience and especially to people who are starting out and wanting to scale this. So, I mean, Mike, I absolutely really, really appreciate your time and, uh, you know, appreciate you coming on and sharing your journey. So can you tell, you know, where can people find you and connect with you if they're listening to this? Sure. So um, the best way to reach, reach out to me would be would be through my Facebook profile. Actually, if you... Um, if you can link it somewhere, that that will be amazing. You know, we we have the website, we have everything, but there's nothing nothing better for me than you know, like just getting to know someone personally. And and Facebook is a great way to do so. Of course, yeah, I'll link it in the show notes, and it'll be across everywhere: iTunes and Spotify and uh, YouTube and wherever you search Digital Nomad Cafe. So um, perfect. Look, <laughs> perfect. thank you. Appreciate your time. Have a lovely day, and um, thanks to all the listeners as well. Thank you, Adam. Great speaking to you. Thank you for listening to the Digital Nomad Cafe podcast. Head over to the website to access the resources and links mentioned in today's episode at digitalnomadcafe.com.